Good luck. All right, so tourney to master round eight uh, shall commence. Ooh, oh my. Well, I have been dying to play this opening, so um, we're going to die to play it. I am profoundly curious about what's going on here, so let's find out. I intend to castle my king to the right. I've heard that this center pawn versus center pawn thing is very combative. Um, I'm not sure exactly what that means, but I think we'll find out almost immediately here uh, exactly what that looks like. Um, well, I'd rather not block my bishop, so we're going to go off to the side here. As much as I would favor an asymmetric position, just out of interest's sake, um, I think this will be fine. All right, we're going to drop this back. To me, this looks right. Um, this does allow for some interesting tactics if they open the center and I have not moved my king. However, my opponent has not moved their king yet either, so it's kind of a wash, I hope. We'll see. Okay, my chat window is active. Very good. Uh, and in emotes only mode. Uh, rather, it's supposed to be in emotes only mode and I fixed it. There we go. And the thought of putting the chat in that mode is not that I don't want to hear from people. Um, it's not that I'm like antisocial or something. It's just that this is a, I don't know, for an amateur tournament game, this is fairly competitive. Um, I'm not stressing myself out too much here, but this is a difficult position already. Um, I think I have everything covered just barely. Uh, it is a bit strange putting my bishop back like that. I wonder if castling my king to the left is an option here. Although all my generals will be on the right. Hmm. I mean, there's space for my... Oh. I did not think this would occur. Uh... Hmm. That is strange. So I could do pawn takes, or I could do bishop takes. If bishop takes, my bishop's kind of a target. If pawn takes, my rook is a target. So yeah, we're doing bishop takes. Alright. I could give back the bishop if I'm in trouble. I have that first and foremost in my mind that in the event that this goes sour or south or whatever you want to call it, um, uh, just offer to give back the material. Usually that works. Um, but maybe I have better. I have to be careful as Gota not to overpress. Um, 
Yeah, that's a strong attacking move. So just castling my king off to the side seems like a sensible play, but it allows a bishop drop back here. Retreating my bishop and starting to exchange things in the center has its own thread of logic. Um, not sure how I feel about that one. But yeah, giving my king out of the center seems important here. I could use my bishop to defend my other bishop, but that just makes things worse. Um... All right, we're going to play the exciting move here. Um, there are possibilities here. This is a situation with possibilities. One is just put the bishop down somewhere, threaten to promote it both next to the rook and over here. Uh, that might be met with a silver inner position. If they promote, or if they push this pawn further, I do bishop takes. They promote their pawn. I sack my bishop for the rook, and then I take the pawn for free. So that was what I was counting on here: is this bishop uh, four four five drop. Uh, I anticipated a king move, and then I'm not sure what. Um, but yeah, there's a target, there's a target, um, here's a target. Yeah, and actually I have everything covered, so this is the sensible play, making use of my bishop. So the tricky question here, I think, is do I take this or uh, do I take this one? If I capture in the center, I don't have an attack, which is strange. You'd think that attacking in the, or capturing in the center would give me an attack. Um, but yeah, they can only. Oh, they're threatening silver takes pawn. That's the threat here. But then they can't put another pawn in front of their. Well, then the silver just takes either one of these. So I can't completely blow off their threat here. Um. I have to do something about it. So this looks correct to me. If they do silver takes, I could drop a pawn and this does not win. It slows them down. So they're threatening to advance the silver and then drop a pawn in front. And while I could exchange my bishop for two silvers, that's probably not the smartest thing ever. So yeah, my plan here was to drop the pawn right here. I guess silver takes... Um, well then this rook is floating, and the floating rook means this silver's pinned. So I could attack this and attack it over and over again. 
with this floating rook here. Interesting. Wow, that's sharp. I think that's correct, though. That pawn drop, silver takes, bishop takes, rook takes, and then I could move out my bishop, just attack this directly. They could use their bishop to defend the silver. And I don't know. I'll have a silver in hand also. Yeah, I think they've... Uh, this is an exciting position. Um, I'm not sure if they've erred. But I think this has to be tried. So central foul versus central foul is supposed to be very full of fight. And boy, do we have a fight here. So I guess we're playing it right. Or rather, it's full of fighting. Um, yes, I'm probably just going to do bishop takes silver if they take this pawn. And if they don't take this pawn, I think we declare victory. <laughs> Not really, but it's just a much more pleasant position when I'm not getting mated in the center of the board right in the opening. Yeah, so I think that's a calm move here that brings some peace in this position. Um, so we're going to fight back. There we go. And we have avoided getting mated um, so far. Which should give me a turn or two to maybe escape this ridiculous thing. Get my king out of here. Um, it's unfortunate, like, if I take this gold, then this dropping it between the rook and the gold doesn't do anything. Um... All right, let's run like hell. If we need to, we can use the gold to defend the head of this thing. But presently, we have a bishop. They have a rook. So we can actually attempt to enjoy this. Um, oh. Okay. Uh, this rook is not defending this gold. The silver is defending it. The silver has a second duty here. It is very tempting to do this sacrifice, um, because I can drop the pawn, win the knight, win the lance, start attacking in a very serious way here. Um, in a position where they didn't think that I was going to attack. I would be giving them a bishop. A bishop could be a little bit scary. I'm sorry, if I take the knight, they have silver takes, so... It's not as good as I was proposing, but man, taking two pieces for a bishop, not bad in this position anyway. Um, what would I do with the gold? Actually, I could drop the gold right behind the silver um, and then the pawn over here. And yeah, that looks fun. Why did they allow this? Um, uh, it's not mate, though. The bishop is still a stronger piece to have. Man, this is so tempting. So extremely tempting. I have not castled yet. Alright, I cannot resist this. I'm sorry. It's it's too exciting of a deal. 
Um, just because this silver in the center is not, um, I don't know, the foundation of a castle. It's uh, quite the target here. So if Rook takes, yeah, we just get the silver. If silver takes, we can drop the pawn right here and just have fun. We could also try to attack this silver in the center. Um, but then they defend it, so that doesn't go anywhere. Oh, this pawn drop is illegal. Uh, okay, that's exciting. I should maybe not do an illegal move. Um, maybe. All right, let's do this instead. Pretend that was the plan. We still get a piece. We still have something of an attack, but this was not the plan. <laughs> we can pretend, but it's not going to be easy. Um, right, so they're intending to advance the silver once more, and then once more, once more, and um, I think we're going to... Wait, that opens a hole back here for their bishop. Hmm, tactics are so tricky. Well, if they push this again, I take this gold, or silver, or I take the one in the center, really. Um, yeah, this king needs to run away. And if they're going to do something overly aggressive, we will encourage it rather than discourage it. Because we enjoy exciting games. Um, so do I take the silver or do I take the other silver? Or do I drop the pawn? No, they just take here. could drop a pawn in front of their rook. Um, that wins at least a piece. So they have two silvers that are defended by this rook. If silver takes, I take the free silver here. If rook takes, I take the free silver here. And I'm threatening to drop a silver to win their rook and continue attacking. Um, they don't like that. Their rook is defended. Um, so we have only a silver to counter with here. Um, I mean, what do you do? What do you do here? Let's activate the bishop. This rook is kind of a target here. All right, let's promote this bishop. And we're threatening to win the silver in the center of the board. Or rather, the one, this silver, <laughs> that's in the center. I'm considering there's three by three in the area in the middle to be the center. And 
the only defended piece in center right now is this silver. So by being willing to offer up my rook, I've got a nice attack here. Yeah, kind of like Bug House, you have to use all the pieces. The only piece I've not used yet is this silver. Um, I mean, I could also bring this silver out to try to defend my king, but I don't... I'm not sure how effective that would be. This point here is kind of lost to the opponent already. Okay. Oh! That is a fork. Well spotted, sir. Um, so yeah, defending this point might actually become important. Um, wait, first let's handle this check. And the reason we want to handle that first is because if the king moves over, I have another check. So... All right, second, let's handle this check. Thanks for the game. Yeah, I would have done the same thing here, just out of uh, a reaction. Or I'd be very tempted to do the same thing. Um, uh, yeah, thanks for the game. Have a nice day. Ooh. That was really sharp. Um, if he doesn't care to analyze, that's entirely fine. I think this just got uh, really, really sharp very quickly, and... Um, Cool. All right. Uh, so yeah, this is just us doing the post game analysis in this case. Um. Yeah, it's not knee food, but I almost knee food. That was scary. Um. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Uh. Yeah. I, yeah. All right. Well. This is how our game began. Uh, I didn't really... Like, if he had played this over, I would have played here. It's not that I wanted to mirror him at all. It's just that this diagonal is actually pretty important. So, uh, that's why I didn't just allow this silver to run amok on the king's side. Um, yeah, this was improvised. But the main idea is that in the case where he sacrifices, I'm not giving up the 5-5 five, five square without a fight. Um, and I don't know if this is good or bad. It looked very interesting. Uh, I know that central foul rook versus central foul rook is a thing. So by his move order of putting the rook here first and then pushing the center pawn... Um, I felt like, well, I've got to commit to this now, because this looks too interesting. Um, like, if he had started the game with the center file pawn instead, this might be a more flexible move order. Because in the event that I'm crazy enough to do this, uh, yeah, he can do this. Or he could just play, like, Hiroshino or something else. So, like, here there's more options. Uh, by playing the rook there immediately, you've said to the world, hey... This is the one I want to play. And on many occasions, I've just pushed the third foul pawn and brought the rook over. But today I was feeling like I really wanted to see what happened here. Um, so this is... Um, I'm not sure about this edge pawn. I mean, he's got to activate his bishop somehow. 
but this sack just I don't know a lot of really sharp stuff I think he didn't um, plan on this and had to wing it um, so I think here yeah this is a nice defensive move but uh, I just this is way too hard to analyze um, like I was nervous here about silver takes um, maybe some other day we'll see this uh, play out but that was not to happen today I guess um, and so what's concerning is that like he's threatening both of these pawns uh, as well as the bishop and this might just straight up refute my move Right, so I'm kind of forced to make a decision. The decision is to chase down the rook or to try to hold the position some other way and give up my rook and not really have any compensation. So this is the obvious candidate here, but um, yeah, this is, I don't know how I feel about this one. Um, I mean, during the game I was commenting that this is possible, but I don't think I had planned on this, so... Um, yeah, this could have been kind of ugly. Um, I mean, okay, yes, this silver is attacked. Uh, I just, I don't know how to continue here. This is special. Um... So, they have two pawns in hand. My rook's attacked. Um, I mean, I guess the rook's threatening to take the pawn, so Gota has, or Santa has to do something about it. Um, do we have to take the rook? If taking the rook is forced, that simplifies this analysis, but... I don't know if I could rule other moves out just yet. Um, like pushing the center pawn might be possible. But then they'd pawn drop in front of the rook. Yeah, okay. So this is forced. Um, and I guess I have a... Uh, Gota has a good game here. I guess I'm fine with this. Um... Yeah, this gold has to take, because otherwise the square opens up. So this will be coming. Um, and is there any other trick here that somehow salvages this position? Feels like it's just too early for the game to end. But um, I don't know, maybe there is some trick here. So, as much as I'd like to bring the king over, like, this is promoting. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. You're right. Uh, what else? What else can be considered? Um. Huh, maybe it's fine. Maybe I was worried about nothing. So I'm debating, like, there's rook drops in various places, there's this silver advance idea, but there's not a whole lot going on here. And uh, these pieces enter the play, too. So, okay, um, I guess this is fine. And because this is fine, then... This silver takes can be ruled out. And we have to look at something else. Um, I mean, there are alternatives. Like, somehow these silvers have to attack together, right? 
It's not as if this bishop can play defense here. Um, okay, free knight. Free knight is a free knight. Um, this is just so spooky. Maybe it's yeah, maybe it's fine. This bishop covers territory. Like this bishop is so useful covering that. Um hmm. Yeah, okay, so this is actually fine. So because that's fine, um, let's see, the move in the game was to protect this point. And this is an important point. It's taking me a while to appreciate just how important it is. Um, yeah, I have expected us to go somewhere else here. So... Oh, well, if this pawn gets taken, the gold is attacked. That wins a tempo. Um, so if we just run the king right now, um, this is playable, but not easy. Um, Yeah, I'm not sure. Something like this is concerning. So I, this king move might cast my bishop drop into question. Um, it's just too much to evaluate. On the other hand... If, like, somehow I could back this pawn up one square, this would be a lot easier to figure out because I would have one more tempo to defend everything. So, there's this idea. Um, but I think they play silver takes here. And... This, so, even if I drop another pawn here... Is this actually fine? Hmm. If that's fine, they might have to do rook takes instead. So if I do this, if they drop the pawn now... Um, I mean, I've got the square covered already. Let's see, I only have, I have one, two, three pieces attacking this. Yeah, this is just so weird. If they take, then I can take. And then they push one of these two silvers somehow. Um, I'm guessing this one. And I check, and I'm out of checks. Oh, but then we can sack this. So that's not worth it for the opponent. And therefore... Oh, their king has to castle. Wow. Okay, so the bishops are actually doing a very good job defending here. Uh, so, wait, no, this is attacked. Okay. Um, yeah, that's nuts. So this pawn capture back here 
is not winning, and therefore this pawn drop is nice, and therefore we're probably going to see this instead. Um, but this activates my rook. And that's devastating. Um, maybe. Hopefully. I don't know. But yeah, if, anyway, the idea is that this opening is like super combative, and I was trying to find some way to make the king running away actually profitable here. I'm not finding a profitable answer. So, I think that means for my opponent to improve here, they just can't make this move. It's just mistimed. Um, yeah, they've given some material, and they just don't have time to push this right now, despite being sent to. This requires more time than they have. Okay, well, um, we could take a look at the rest of the game here, but I think it just pretty self-explanatory. Once you get into this position, getting out of it is super difficult. Um, yeah, so if they do rook takes, again, like, my rook becomes active, and they don't have anywhere effective to drop the rook. This would be a nice position for them to drop a bishop if they had one, and I gave them a bishop. This bishop sack is probably unsound, and like running away is probably safer. Um, but this works, and the game I survived and won, but um, this is probably the coward's way to go, and... Um, yeah, this is probably quite sensible. I mean, it's tricky to figure out. Like, long term, they have a general, I have a bishop. This is going to be quite a struggle. Um, but, I don't know. I feel like this is something that's harder for the opponent than it is for me. I am still down the one general I have a right I have bishop gold gold silver instead of silver gold gold silver so they have a fifth general which makes their castle very hard to attack which is what kind of inspired me to just take this gold while the rook is overworked um but I think this is probably the better move Oh, this is the more interesting or more fun move to play. Um, wait, 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 wait. I missed an idea. My god, I missed an idea. Oh, boy. Well, um, that would have been a very nice find. There is no response to this move. That's just game. So, yeah. Um, I found it later. But here, this would have... This is the thing I was searching for in the post-game analysis. So, I did find it a move later. It's about as good. Not quite. But still pretty good back. Uh, even having given up a move. And yeah, our opponent had to leave, um, and that's fine. But yeah, we managed to get the silver back. I gave up this gold because it's nowhere near the king. I'm threatening to take their rook. They're actually threatening to take my rook, so... This might not be a very easy position to understand. I am getting more and more material, but... Um, they're finally getting a chance to attack, and so I have to uh, pull off a successful attack sooner or later. Um, I mean, if I'm super cowardly, I can just defend this pawn, but um, the correct move here has to be taking the rook. 
they take, they promote, my king runs, um, they take here, and it's, um, well, I have to protect my generals back here, and they have the option to take another general, so, yeah, despite having six generals, this might not be the easiest structure to attack, and I've not castled, so. Thankfully, they don't have a knight. Like, they don't have a lance, they don't have a knight. Neither of us has any of the important pieces here to break down each other's castles. Um, if I try something silly like this drop, that, that could force them to put a gold in defense. Um... I don't know how I care for that. Um, I kind of prefer this idea. So I want the knight. Oh. Okay. We're thinking just a simple defensive move. Um, I see. Yes. Yeah, this is not an easy position. So... Yeah, the defensive move here could be very important. Um, is there no way to combine defense and offense here? I did just get through winning some material, but yeah, that rook drop is pretty damn threatening. I feel like maybe this is the right way to defend. Um, that, yeah, we can allow the rook drop, but, um, I mean, this silver move just feels a bit slow. So, yeah, it's an exciting position. And, yeah, my position is very hard to overwhelm. Um... Their castle is not so easy to break, but yeah, I can drop a pawn, push the pawn if it helps, etc. Um, alternatively, I just drop the pawn instead of the rook, and like the rook drop, fork, whatever. All that stuff doesn't immediately pay off, but this rook drop feels slow. It's a very heavy piece to attack with. Um... I think this is the lightest way to continue the attack. Yeah, I like this move here, actually. Okay, yeah. But if I put a silver here, they retreat this gold. Oh, but then I check them. Okay, yes. There we go. This is the move we're searching for. Now, this kind of forces their hand to doing some current kind of kamikaze attack. Um... And it's just a matter of, like, who prevails here. Um, so. We have some exciting tactics, but... By the end of this, I assume I must stand better. Alright, oh, there we are. Yes, this hits this way and this way. Um, yeah, that's nice. That'll do it. And if there were any doubt, you could drop the rook first to force this to be a fork, and then go back and win the rook. But this is the more accurate way, and does not risk heavy material loss. So, um, Whereas the way that would remove the rook from the board by force. I mean, what's the rook going to do? Sack itself for gold here? Uh, Rook's got nothing to do here. So, yeah, this is decisive. Um, yeah, the Rook goes anywhere, and you drop a Silver, you drop a Rook, you just keep attacking. There's no defending this King. Which means, in turn, that this little sack here doesn't work, but it's the only move here. Um, because this Silver takes Gold is too strong. 
So this is how you overwhelm the castle. Um, like, I'm still struggling to find a... Uh, I mean, is there nothing they can do? I always believe that there's some kind of defense that's possible, but it's getting tough here. Um, yeah, it's getting really tough to defend this. They'd have to do something like this. Which is super counterintuitive, but um, like the pattern doesn't repeat itself so nicely over here. Um, because uh, uh, Gota's running out of squares to attack at. The king and bishop are becoming closer together such that a rook fork is not going to crush things, but this is just silly. Um, oh, well, okay, yes. Yeah, that does prevent a fork. Um, I guess if that's necessary, it is. I was trying to find some other... No, there is no other clever way about this. That's the way to defend this. But then this is just a really sad uh, defense. Because you're out of gold. Silver takes might give up an important tempo. Um, might be very wrong to do silver takes there. Um, but yeah, this, um, hmm, actually that's not right. Yeah, anyway, you can get super excited about, um, looking at end games and come up with kinds of creative ideas, but as exciting as it is to go super deep into the variation, um, it probably among amateur players indicates that you've gone down the wrong variation if it just keeps getting deeper and deeper. Um, yeah, it could go for 6-9 pawn. There's a lot of stuff that could be done here. Um, So, yeah. And, um, well, I was briefly thinking about this. And, like, can I justify this all somehow? This looks fun. But anyway, I'm getting way distracted. This is, like, way, way down the rabbit hole. Um, uh, the key point is that... Um, both kings do get to castle here. And that that's the most extreme variation in the case where you just take the free rook. It could get a little complicated. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay, fine, fine. We'll take a look. Take that. I guess if we really want to look at this... Um, Okay, uh, is there some trick here, I wonder? Is there some way to pursue this? Cannot move this gold. Right, the gold's a sitting target. Oh! Okay, I see. They're running out of pieces to defend with. Um, mm -hmm. On account of my... Um, audience members extreme rating I've got to take into account what he's suggesting yeah I was gonna suggest this um, and then what does Bishop drop like it's gotta be very nice right no the Bishop is more useful over here yeah we just put the pawn there they drop this, and then 
We put the bishop somewhere over here, I guess. Here, there. This is a loose piece. I'm not sure if it matters, but again, I trust um, Escape Artist, so. Yeah, that's a decent position for sure. Oh, I'm sorry, it's a winning position, and an interesting way for me to learn to attack here. Um, huh. Let me put this on the big board so we can all see this. There's just a lot to take in. But, yeah, this... Um, why did I think this is tricky? Why did I think there was some counterattack here? That rook cannot defend the gold. And since the gold cannot be defended by the rook, just like, and the rook can't easily defend the center 5 7 point either, um, it's not really clear what's going or how uh, Santa saves this. I mean, they don't, but how they try to make it tricky. It's not so clear. Um, let me see what the next comment is. Yeah, oh, cannot move the rook away. Okay. Um, uh, well, I was looking at this. Let me play it. So they say that um, a way to remember things is by playing them with your fingers, and so I am playing this. Obviously, silver takes us out, so king takes. And we take here, the silver is attacked. Okay, we promote this. Um... Right. Where's the next move? Silver drop. Okay, oh. Because they don't have a gold, this is nice. Yeah, okay. If they had another gold in hand, I would object to this, but here they only have a silver to try to defend their king. Um, but yeah, also the rook drop is possible. Um, oh, and there's no fork, because uh, even in the trickiest possible case, um, Senta's own rook is blocking the diagonal to the king here. Uh, to my king. So yeah, the rook drop is also strong candidate. Wow. Okay, so this silver drop is uh, what I was seeking here. That makes sense. So yeah, there is a logical conclusion. We're on ply 74, or move 74. This is way down the rabbit hole, but worth the journey. Um, and in chess games, players look this deep, too. Uh, but in Shogi, looking deeper is harder because it's possible to drop pieces on any square on the board, even though most of the time you don't just drop it on any random square. Um, but yeah, you get there are many possibilities to move and drop pieces. Although once you drop them, the possibilities narrow quite a bit. Um, so yeah, let me play through this uh, from here one more time. Just next, bishop takes, rook fork, rook takes, and then if they try to defend this way, this gold drop is winning. Um, you know, now that I look at it, uh, uh, wait. That's check, which is why we have to do a gold. Um, hmm. 
yeah, I guess it, it is necessary to use a gold because the silver is hanging. And there's no tricky way about that. Um, hmm. Yeah, okay, the gold drop is the only way to continue the attack. And we get this nice piece here. And um, this actually does continue the attack, as does uh, just placing the rook. So we're threatening things across the rank, and we're threatening also stuff... Uh, well, okay. Yeah, right, the knight hangs. Uh, and then there's a silver drop if necessary. But... Um, actually, yeah, there's stuff... What could they possibly do to attack here? Um, so, I'm oh, sorry, this gold is currently threatened. They can't, the opponent cannot focus solely on attacking, um, because that just instantly loses. And then we could take here. And the threat on this edge, on the first rank, is severe. Um, and this fails, so there's this shot, but, um, this must somehow, like, yeah, I get that you have an attack, oh, oh, that is interesting, um, hmm, mm hmm, I mean, there's only two possibilities here, and both of them look really scary. Um, usually you don't bring the... Oh, wait. This always gets me made if I do this, doesn't it? All right. Right. So, okay. And then if this, then this. No, we don't promote. We take this way check um and then we have to take and then we take the knight no we check here okay wait yeah i see oh that's even yeah i see i'm slow on the uptake or you don't need to do oh shoot i hit the wrong button Sorry. I meant to go back one, not go back infinity. But yeah, I was going to point out like I could take here too. Um, shoot. Well, there goes the variation. Uh, I mean, we could try to recreate it, but it's not worth recreating. You've seen it once, you've seen it a thousand times. Uh, but it's still... It's great to see the attacking possibilities here. Um... So, um, but yeah, the, that's just, this is a huge whiff on both of our parts. We both missed this, which would have simplified everything. So, uh, yeah, I need to keep in mind this kind of trick. Um, this would have been interesting. I mean, I didn't do this because the silver defends the silver, but that's really not the most important thing in this position. Um, yeah, their entire position is collapsing um, on this. So if they take here, we take here, we're threatening stuff. Um, if they take here, we take this. And they don't have a fork. Uh, let's see, what have we missed? Move 19 was very bad. Oh, pawn 5-5. Five five. Yes. Yes, this... Um, yeah, this allowed this move. Which ended up being very powerful. Right, they needed to castle... Oh, actually I hadn't even thought about that castling. That makes sense. That's the safer way to castle here, because, like, that's the way I always castle. Why did I not think of this? 
I don't know, because I saw the edge pawn moved. But yeah, this this is the safe side to castle on. Um Yeah, they this this is just too aggressive. Um it's either do or die, in this case it was die. Um if they like somehow gained a tempo out of this, you could maybe justify it, but still. Um Yeah, this is just they didn't have time for this. They need to play this. And um except that they're just down material in a very difficult position. Actually now. <laughs> So I have this defended, I have this defended. Yeah, oh, um, yeah, that's possible. I think we even lead with this, no? This seems, let me zoom the board in once more so everybody can see it. Um, but yeah. Yeah, and then, like, we just tuck the king away and do the Mino and etc. Um, yeah, push here, castle, just continue going, um, yeah, don't neglect the head of my king entirely, and so even though I'm immune to bishop drops because there's no bishop to drop, um, I still have to be careful about this kind of thing. Yeah, so this uh, is still concerning. Um, but this is better for the opponent uh, by far than what actually transpired. Um, so... Um, yeah, it's a different game, that's for sure. And it's possible that my pawn push here just encourages their activity. And maybe it's just a terrible idea, but... Um, I don't know. Yeah, this is a really nice way to add pressure. I'm trying to find a counter move. It's not so obvious. Oh, okay, yeah, we could do this around the rook. Yeah, that makes sense. And so we take the long journey to building a castle, but we've got time. Time is on our side. Although we've both castled opposite directions, so yeah, he could build a more solid castle than mine. Uh, we can build high mino, or tower mino, or what? What's it called? Hi, Mino. Uh, that's cute. Wow. Pawns and silvers, all these pawns and generals do a really good job covering territory. Um, it's, yeah, it's amazing just how effective they can be. Yeah. Yep, so we can push this and they can push. I don't know if this is the right timing for this or this is just a general concept. Okay. Uh, okay. What's the idea? No, I've had to defend similar things. And yeah, this is a. Uh, sane way to attack. Um, silver to... Oh, okay. We moved the rook over. Hmm. Oh, right. That strengthens the attack. Um... Yeah, that's sensible. So, um, is that, ugh. what else can we, I mean, 
these moves all do make sense individually. Um, oh, so yeah, here I was going to suggest, what about this? Yeah, so they escape, and we welcome them back in. Um, yeah, and that's a game, and it's a strategy. It's playable, but uh, yeah, I'm advantageous, but not winning. So this is a sensible way to go, using these pieces in uh, cooperation with each other, putting the king somewhere safe against bishop drops, and uh, not giving my rook any immediate avenue of attack. This is a sensible way to play the game. Um, but yeah, what they played on move 19, just opening the center with their king still sitting in the center, seems to be a popular kind of maneuver this time of year. Uh, we'll see just how many days, weeks, or months it remains so popular to like attack at the expense of having your king so exposed. Um, I might be just getting slightly better at recognizing when my opponents do this, but yeah, I I think the timing of year and people having festivities and other distractions uh, might um, somehow be affecting uh, just allowing us to have exciting games here, so uh, it's not a bad thing. But it leads to some really sharp, exciting stuff that really is unnecessary. Um, there's more to Shogi than just the really sharp stuff. Yeah, pawn to 9-5 is the key move of this attack. Um, so, this, uh, yeah, once you have enough pieces out here, they don't even have a bishop, and this is still fine. Usually you'd like to have like knight, bishop, lance, whatever, but here this is still really good. And pawn 9-5 is the uh, key lever to open this up. Uh, my king's going to survive. I'm still going to be better, but this is a good attack. It forces um, me to react. And it's going to be a tough game, despite having bishop for general. Um, and the reason it's going to be a tough game is because I blocked my bishop, I blocked my rook. I shouldn't have spent that time chasing around the silvers to try to feel safe, because now I don't feel safe anymore. This is uh, well played. Um, so yeah, when I played uh, against recommendation, I suggested this pawn move, because I'm like, hey, this silver looks scary, we can evict it. Um, but yeah, this has an advantage of temporarily feeling safe, but um, we get that other position and don't feel so safe anymore. Um, so it's, uh, it's the game of generals. Every move has an advantage and a disadvantage, except for the ones that just completely lose. Those are disadvantageous, but... Most moves um, have some advantage to them, and have some drawback. So you have to decide what's important, and go for it. Um, this game my opponent thought attacking was important, and they're not wrong, but um, they also have to remember. Yeah, bishop in hand is a big advantage. I've sometimes had a bishop on the board. It's not a large advantage on the board, but here in hand, yeah, my opponent, um, Senta, has to play very carefully. For example, they can't just play pawn 5-5 five five again. Um, they're constantly having to worry about all the places the bishop could drop and threaten. Uh, yes. Yeah, so you play, like, a low castle here. Having your generals just cover as many squares on the bottom ranks as possible, and then play for an edge file. That way, like, the center's blocked, the left side's blocked, most of the right side's blocked. You just need to worry about the edge, and that's a clever attack. Um, 
but yeah. Um, the edge file is tricky here. Oh, uh, wait. Huh. So normally, normally I would just play Mino and half Mino all the time. Um, I'm actually kind of curious. Given the strange material balance or imbalance, is this worth considering? Is there some kind of castle with one general that's worth playing against this imbalanced strategy? There might be. Um, but given the material imbalance, putting the kings on the same side of the board might be a smart thing to do here. Um, Shogi's never so simple, but you know, it feels like that should be a thing. Uh, an engine will probably tell you that somehow it's a thing. Um, but yeah. Either way, this is... Uh, let's see. Uh, if so, you need to make sure after trading peace, you're the one who gets the advantage and keep attacking. Yes... So eventually, some peace trades will occur. And that's the condition under which you want to allow that trade. If your opponent can force trades to happen on their terms, um, then you're stuck on the defensive, as I've been on many occasions, just waiting and waiting. Um, so yeah, this same side casting would be possible if there's some way that I can activate pieces and force trades on my terms. Uh, so it comes down to the specifics of this position. Which um, engines might be very uh, qualified to point out things. Uh, or very strong players too, but um, it's not obvious. This isn't a common position, as far as I know. Um, so, you could have to, you might have to come up with a lot of creative ideas here. But yeah, it could backfire to put the king in the corner with just one general. Um, you'll never know till you try it, so. Uh, also, like, I've invested a move in this, so I'd have to eventually either Anaguma, which I can't do without a silver, or I'd have to invest a move here eventually. Um, so, yeah, there's some tempo loss in this idea, but it's okay. So, one, 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 and then reconsider from here. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess this could be strongest. Yeah. And get, keep the king away from this. And then we just put the bishop here. Okay. Uh, doesn't work that way. Yeah. So. Tough position. Interesting game, though. Uh, well, so now that I look at it, I mean, so he's threatening to do this on his terms at some point, so I'd want to force this. But yeah, I have to come up with some way to use the generals and eventually force trades on my terms. Um, oh, gosh darn it, there's a disadvantage to everything. I've just let him play this pawn move for free. Okay. Jeez. Wow. Okay. Ay ay ay. So I see. Previously, I was looking at like this is not. Uh, I thought this was possible. It's not really possible here because well. Actually, this this is possible, but this is not like the way any of this should be going. Um, plus, blocking the bishop is still a bad idea. 
Yeah, so... Um... Yeah, finding original moves is hard. If it were easy, maybe more people would play this game. Um, it takes dedication to play this. Yeah, I don't know what to do. <laughs> uh, but you're right. Trades do have to happen on my terms. It's just um, not super easy to dictate what my terms are here. So maybe this is necessary. Yeah, you're the one who dominates the central file at the moment. So this has to be corrected. Um, so possibly we could... I have to save this. One piece castle seems risky. Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay. So there's just not time for a one piece castle. And then trying to bring it back together. Um, okay. Fair enough. Or even if there is time, it's very risky. So two piece castle is better than a castle with a gold and a bishop. I see. All right. That makes sense. It might be playable, but um, yeah, that's risky. This is why I'm having so much difficulty figuring it out, because like there's risk everywhere and no way to mitigate it. So... Yeah. Um, yeah, it turns out having this next to the king is important. Um, if I'm not feeling like walking into the edge file, there are other castles I could consider. Like there's this. Um, uh, I could do Elmo or whatever this is called. So I don't have to put my king uh, right next to the edge file. Um, so there's other ideas, um, you could put the silver next to the edge file and bring up the golds or something, I don't know. It's not super obvious to me how to play this, but that's, like, our opponent sacrificed a bishop so they could have a space advantage temporarily. Um, and so they're going to enjoy that for a while. And I'm going to eventually enjoy all the things that happen because they can't do things because I have a bishop in hand. Um, so the bishop in hand is supposed to be menacing and forcing them to think of things. Um, or think of how to deal with all the possible threats I could make with it. Of which I've not made very many. And I don't want to attack from my castle. That would be just crazy. So... Um... Yeah, I think we attack this way. And then if this... Silver takes... Okay. Um... He still controls the center. It's a very powerful grasp over... Uh, what do we do? Moving away the bishop is risky. Um, I don't know how crazy this is. The idea might be that I drop this back and then this in. Oh! Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I see. So this is... There are plenty of ideas here. 
Uh, I hadn't considered that, but okay, now I'm seeing like what some of the many possibilities here are. Uh, that helps. Yeah. So this is safer than the One Piece castle, but they still dominate the center of file. It's still going to be a long game. Um, much longer than after 19.55. I see. Yeah, I was severely doubting, like, what do you do with this kind of central control, but there's a lot of things you can do, actually. And we've actually seen this proverb push the odd file pawn. Like, the attacks that we've seen have been down the first file, the fifth file, and now down the third file. Uh, so pushing the odd file pawns seems to be uh, the magic recipe here to activating the pieces in attacking. Despite me having a bishop in hand, it's still a good strategy. So, interesting. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot more game to be played, but um, this is a... You don't want to, like, spend forever memorizing opening stuff, and this is a good logical transition into the middle game. And, you know, if Gerard have had played this, uh, we would be seeing this and be an interesting game. Um, I mean, the game we had was interesting in a different way, but yeah, this would have been challenging. Um, I'm not sure how this would have gone. Yeah, really cool game. Uh, so many thanks to Escape Artist for uh, assistance with this analysis. This has been illustrative of like just uh, some of the many ideas in Shogi. Um, so yeah, uh, we have this is round eight of the tourney to master. Um, I think we have one more round to go and uh, we'll see who our champion is at the end of it. It's not going to be me. Um, I don't have... I forget if I've even broken even, which would be a fantastic achievement, considering at the start of this tournament, um, I had just crossed into one Don territory, so the fact that I'm winning some of my games is quite nice. Um, but yeah, I'm also doing the best I can to try to coordinate and meet my opponent's scheduling demands. Um, sometimes it's tricky because uh, the world's better players are all around the globe. Um, but um, to the extent I can, I'm trying to be polite, trying to meet things. I'm trying not to schedule everything at midnight their time. We're trying not to schedule things that, like, whenever it's not great for either of us. But unfortunately, um, like, if we have to play during the week, it's usually going to be after my working hours. So that tends not to work out around the world very well. Um, so that's unfortunate. I'm doing the best I can to try to schedule things on the weekends, try to make things fair. Uh, but yeah, I don't think that there's any, at this level, I don't think there's any notion that, like, I'm gaining some edge that might actually win first or anything because of, uh, scheduling concerns. No, I'm not anywhere near winning first in this. And we've had some very strong opponents just beat me down, so, um, yeah, very interesting game. And uh, we'll see what round nine has in store.